let's move on to the last paper that we are going to cover when it comes to multimodal learning. So far, we have been focusing mostly on the type of loss functions and the task itself. But how about architecture? Can you have a unified architecture for all sorts of data? Can you have a unified architecture for text and when it comes to sentiment analysis? Uh, grammatically correctness or no? Paraphrasing or entailment or uh, optical flow estimation. This one, we have spent quite a lot of time in part one of the course doing optical flow. And if you know the optical flow, given this image, given the optical flow, you're gonna know where the pixels are gonna end up next in the next frame of a video. And these are very important when you consider time-dependent data when it comes to videos. There is uh, speech and music that we're gonna cover later on. And then there is gonna be uh, reinforcement learning. And in this case, StarCraft. They are all gonna represent their data in different forms. Can you have a unified architecture for all of them? And that's the architecture of Perceiver IO. It is gonna be based on attention mechanism. Regardless of what type of data you have, you can put them in a matrix. For instance, if you have text, this is gonna be your sequence length, and these are gonna be your embedding dimension. If you have pixels, this is gonna be all of your pixels flattened, and here is gonna be red, green, blue. The message is that M and C could end up being big, and you have no control over them. They depend on the data. This is where your query, your key and value are gonna come from. Your query is gonna come out of something that you have control over, its dimension. And this is the beauty. This is gonna lead into linear cost in terms of the resolution of your original data. You can control N, it's a hyperparameter that you choose. You can control D, it's another hyperparameter that you can choose. And these are learnable. These data is a representation of your data. This gray box here, this gray matrix is learnable. Same thing for this query array here. This is also learnable. You initialize it randomly and then you let the model and the training process learn them. Query is gonna come from here. Key and value are gonna come from here. This is the encoding portion of the architecture. There is gonna be L layers of processing, which is a self-attention mechanism. The output of those processes are gonna go through the decoding stage. Your queries are learnable. Your key and value are gonna come from the processing stage and then you're gonna output your output. And if you zoom in here or in any of those, you can see that there is just an attention mechanism going on. There's query, you compare it to the keys, it's gonna give you the attention scores, you spread the attention among the values, and that's gonna give you the output of this block. That's the architecture. What is the intuition for it? There is gonna be encoding, processing, decoding stages, and it's very similar to how you would process data in general for any data analysis task. You read the data from, the, from your file system, you process it, and then you write it back. As a data scientist, that's what you do. You read the data, you do some visualization, you do some transformations on the data, you clean it, and then you write it back. It's the same thing here. This architecture is doing the same things. It's gonna take a matrix as an input. It's gonna output another matrix. These dimensions, M, C, O, and E, are out of our control. This is what the input data is, what the output of the model is gonna look like. We don't have much control over them. And that depends on the task. If it's a text or video or video plus audio plus label, or if you have uh, reinforcement learning and particular StarCraft or images, each one is gonna have different X and Y. For instance, if you're, if you're processing images, if your task is classification, there is not gonna be much pre-processing or post-processing going on. Your input is gonna have a huge dimension. You are concatenating all of your pixels together. And each one of those pixels has three channels, red, green, blue. And in the end, you want to turn that into a matrix that is one dimensional times 1000 classes. For text, if you go the character level, you're gonna end up with a lot of, uh, a large sequence. If you go the token level, and uh, 
sort of byte per encoding and do your tokenization, you're going to end up with a shorter sequence. And if you go that route, there is going to be tokenization and then the embedding matrix. For character level, there is not much tokenization. You know that character one is going to correspond to the first location, etc. So the input and output are out of our control. The latent stuff, like this latent array or output query array, we have control over that. And N and D, you can choose to fit on your GPUs, and then the cost is manageable. And then you're going to end up being linear in terms of your inputs, linear complexity. For decoding, that depends on the task. You're going to need an output array or output query that has the same resolution as the resolution of your output. And that depends on the task. If you have a mask language model, you need to know what positions you're interested in. If you have classification, what is the task that you're classifying for? Here, for instance, multitask classification, are you doing sentiment analysis? Are you doing grammatical correctness? Are you paraphrasing? Are you entailing? And for a star graph, we are going to cover that later on. So don't worry about it yet. And if you have multimodal autoencoding, you have a video, you have an audio, you have the corresponding label, you can, you need to output, for instance, the X location, the Y location, at what time are you predicting? Are you predicting the video? Are you outputting the audio? Are you outputting the label? Same thing for optical flow. It's a dense prediction task. For each pixel, you need to output two quantities. How far are you going in the X direction? How far are you going in the Y direction? And these are the X and Ys. Uh, and then per each pixel, you have a different X and Y. So you need to play around with your output. This dimension is under your control, the channel dimension. The other dimension is should be the same as the number of things that you, are, you need to output. And that depends on the task. I think I'm going to stop here. For those of who have questions, I'll be around.